morning and welcome to Tea or Coffee on High Impact Television. It is a beautiful Thursday and my name is Mudukwe Jacobs. With me in the studio is... Good morning. Good. Welcome to the show. Yes. Okay, so today we'll be talking about maternal and child care. Mm -hmm. So maternal and child care is, you know, health, health um, services that, mm -hmm. you know, are provided for mothers so when we say mothers we're talking about women in their childbearing age yes. and also children mm -hmm. and according to the world health organization um maternal and child care is you know um you know the health of mothers you know mm -hmm. health of mothers and you know women during pregnancy childbirth and even postpartum Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know most pregnant women actually especially in the developing world actually receive insufficient treatment during this stage. And you, we, it's high time we actually pay attention to pregnant women and mm -hmm. also not just during pregnancy, even after childbirth, we need to pay attention to this because according to World Health Organization, it's okay. been realized that over 135 million women actually put to bed every year. Mm -hmm. And you know, looking at this, after. 135 million from that 135 mm -hmm. million we have 830 women that die wow. every day mm -hmm. due to you know mortality due, due to complications okay. during childbirth and okay. during pregnancy mm -hmm. so how can we you know reduce this high mortality rate how can we reduce reduce it and you know drastically yes drastically and how can we pay more attention in what ways can we actually make sure that both mothers and their children are safe during this period. And you know, we we'll have a guest today that yes, to do justice yes, to the topic we'll we're going to, to be having. Topic. Yes, a and, guest. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be talking about you know maternal and child mm -hmm. care. Yes, mm -hmm. and she's the should I should I say that now? Of course, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the person we will be talking to, she is the CEO of the Audrey Pack Company, mm -hmm. and. Um, You'll be meeting her after the break because, of course, yes, we need to go on a short break now. Mm -hmm. So please do stay glued because you do not want to miss any part of mm -hmm. the show today. A thrilling and bonding experience at High Impact Planet Amusement Park and Resort. Enjoy an amazing retreat in our extremely secured environment with our breathtaking rides. Set goals for the upcoming year in our convenient multi-purpose halls. Bond between team members while giving your staff a desirable treat. High Impact Planet. Fun just got real. When you think about it, there's a lot to celebrate in our lives. From the smallest milestones to our biggest moments, we'll pamper you at High Impact Planet. Whatever the occasion, let's celebrate you at High Impact Planet, where fun just got real. Welcome back. It's still tea or coffee on High Impact Television. You know, before we went on break, we're trying to define and explain what maternal and child care is. Yes. And making use of professional and modern care, mm -hmm. especially in this time and century, mm -hmm. is very necessary. And not just necessary, compulsory for the health of the mother and the child. Yes. And you know, we have a guest in the house mm -hmm. who would give us more information. In our own words, we've tried to explain and define yes. what maternal and child care mm -hmm. is before we went on break. But right now in the studio, we have a guest that would, you know, give us more information that we need to know about the topic for today. I'm sure you don't want to miss out on that. Right here in the studio, I have CEO, the Audrey Park Company. 
Lilian Odim. Thank you welcome to the show. Thank you. You're welcome, much. Much. Thank you. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Okay, so before we went on break, we, I and Modupe, my colleague, we tried to, you know, explain and define in our own words what maternal and child care is. Now that we have, <laughs> I must say, a professional in the studio, <laughs> kindly, you know, define and elaborate more on what maternal and child care is about. Um, thank you very much, Fess, right. for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, I think I'll take my definition from the part that, you know, being a mom and okay. the importance of maternal and child health, mm -hmm. uh, I think it cannot be overemphasized okay. that if we look at it from a point of statistics, Nigeria is number two contributing 14% for, for the world maternal and child mortality. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very important to look at it as a need of urgency. Yes. I, I myself am a mom. I've got a, a she just turned five. I, I have a five-year-old. Uh -huh. And um, being her mom and going through pregnancy okay. and dealing with all the issues that come with pregnancy and having her as a preemie and um, dealing with all of that as well okay. has sort of opened my eyes to the importance of a good maternal and child health oh, okay. in Nigeria, in Africa. Uh, as a whole. So it can be overemphasized. Maternal and child care is the importance of a mother deciding to take all the right steps while she's pregnant to ensure the safety on the, and of the mother and the child okay. is, is the outcome of, of a successful pregnancy. Just during pregnancy? How about childbirth? Um, childbirth is the most important. I think okay. you cannot, one is not, you know, above the other. Okay. I think for a woman, the minute you, you get to the point where you want to conceive, you're okay. at the point where there are certain steps that you need to take that could avoid um, complications during pregnancy okay. or complications at birth. But if we take it back again, infertility for a woman starts from when she's really young, okay. you know, the mistakes made and things that she could have avoided. Okay. So also, as soon as you're a girl, I think it should be part of the curriculum in the school of how a girl child should look after herself. From secondary school, there should be some sort of awareness on, okay. you know, the care for, for a woman. Uh, okay, so according to research, yeah. you know, most pregnant women in developing, you know, countries, they... Um, receive insufficient, or shall I say, no support, you know, when, when it comes to prenatal care or delivering, you know, during childbirth. And um, is it, obviously it's important for them to have appropriate, you know, health checks, prenatal checks before they even, you know, give birth. So how much care is actually needed for these women during pregnancy? I, I think there is um, a, a lot that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, from, as I said again, from the minute you're thinking about getting pregnant, there's certain steps that needs to be take, take it, you need to take. Um, it's as simple as starting folic acid, the minute you realize that you're trying to conceive. There are a lot of things that could be avoided by just mm -hmm. doing some, something that simple. And, but here in Nigeria and in Africa as, as a whole, we take a lot of things for granted. I myself, I was in sort of that school of talk. My mother said, my mother-in-law said, you know, we have all these old people around mm -hmm. us that tell us how we should do things. And um, if we research and just by registering your private hospital or your government hospital, uh, most of these things are almost free in the government hospital where you can get a, a midwife or a gynecologist or a yeah. nurse to just advise basic things, your folic acid, your ferron, um, ensuring that the chap, you, you know, pregnancy is checked, the baby is not bridged and you are trying to push during labor, mm -hmm. labor. So a lot of women in Africa don't bother to go to the hospital based on tradition, mm -hmm. based on religion. You know, we look at other things, other factors, rather than focus on, on what is important. Okay. All right. So what can you classify as child mortality? How would you define child mortality? Nigeria is number 14, contributes 14%, number mm -hmm. two in the world. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's an alarming situation in Nigeria. I think the definition is Nigeria. Uh, babies are dying. Um, in Lagos State, I think there was a statistic that was out some time ago for 500 babies are dying daily. Dying daily, uh, yes. And um, that is quite alarming. But the issue that we need to address are those deaths that are avoidable. Mm -hmm. okay. There are certain steps that the mother needs to take. There are things okay. she needs to know. Um, a woman in Ali Moshe General Hospital we met some time ago whilst we were working there. My company okay. works with hospitals. And she, 
she wasn't too happy being in the hospital because she thought it was easier for her to go to a traditional birth attendant. Mm -hmm. okay. She was being given these herbs and that when the baby comes out, the baby will be small and labor will be easier. And I was like, who gives you all this information that the baby will be smaller? Traditional birth attendants, these people have been in this for many years. And a lot of women are losing their lives and some women bleed to death and some baby gets stuck halfway and they don't know what to do. So okay. I think the women should be informed and more educated in the rural community because that's where we have the mm -hmm. highest cases of maternal and child mortality. And mm -hmm. the government should partner with you know, NGOs and organizations to create awareness. Um, our focus has been to incentivize women to go to the hospital. Okay. Uh, we believe that a woman that is pregnant would always want to do the right thing for mm -hmm. herself okay. and her baby. baby. Uh, statistics have shown, research have shown that women would, that are pregnant are more, you know, they're more concerned about mm -hmm. their health and that of their yes. baby. And if you tell them what is right to do, they would always do it. Do it. And um, my company, we've worked in different states in Nigeria and we've seen how women react, you know, to this information and it does work. So I think they, there should be more, you know, people coming together, organizations coming together to create more awareness on maternal and child health in Nigeria. Okay, so according to the high rate of, you know, maternal and child mortality, according to statistics, like you mentioned, you yes. know, it, it's quite alarming. It is. So do you think that maternal and child mortality can be reduced, like, to the minimum, to the minimum, so the barest I, I, minimum? Yes. I, I totally think it can. Okay, why? Um, there are various projects out there that is tackling this issue. There's okay. the Yellow Heart Initiative. Mm -hmm. There's Audrey Park. There's a lot of projects going on tackling, tackling this issue. Okay. okay. Um, what we want to see is behavioral change. If mm -hmm. a woman okay. is doing something in a certain way and she decides to do it in a different way, she'll get a different outcome. So we're trying to educate women, uh, incentivize them, educate them to make a better choice. So I think um, with time, maybe in another year or two, these statistics are done. I think the numbers will be different because there are a lot of projects going on that is impacting directly on those um, areas that are, are highly affected. Okay. okay. Yeah. Talking about um, the maternal aspect of the topic, how or what approach do you think that can be used to help pregnant women maintain good health during that stage? Um, I think there are various elements of pregnancy, you know, um, that we need to look at. Okay. There is the issue of mosquitoes, which is malaria in pregnancy is okay. a big factor in Nigeria. Uh, I know there's a lot of campaign that is tra targeting that and trying to, to help with that. Okay. There's the issue of nutrition. Um, Nigeria is also, on statistics, one of the countries that has um, high rates of children that are malnourished or stunted. Okay. Um, a stunted child is a child that is not growing properly, mm -hmm. you know. And a certain place, I'll say for the, in the north, for instance, you see a, a lot of children, they're like, oh, I'm six years old. And they look like they are two. Mm -hmm. And they're children that are severely malnourished. And, and pregnant women are pregnant and they're not eating properly. Or a okay. breastfeeding mother is not eating properly. So okay. the mother is malnourished, the child is malnourished. You know, so that, these are different campaigns that I think the government can take on. As I said, again, in partnership with organization, the Audrey Park, we take on all, you okay. know, when it comes to malnutrition, we are doing something. When it comes to prevention for malaria in pregnancy, we're doing something in that regard. When it comes to incentivizing women to go to the hospital, which is our, our main focus, mm -hmm. which is why the company is called the Audrey Park in the okay. first place, okay. is the free packs that are given to women for going to the mm -hmm. hospital that okay. contains various uh, products from our partners. So you cannot overemphasize the importance of the mother's health during pregnancy. Okay. She first needs to take a step by going to register in the hospital. Okay. In doing so, most of the information that she requires will be made available to her. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, you talked about the you know, health of the mother yes. and the child, yes. which can affect both of them. Yes. And you mentioned something about malnutrition yes. of the child yes. and the mother when the mother is not eating properly. Yes. Yeah. Do you think social status has a way of contributing to this problem? Of course. Okay. Um, I was in a discussion a couple of weeks ago and we're trying to drill down to the, you know, how to tackle malnutrition. Okay. Um, giving a pack of food to a malnourished child and treating that child for being severely malnourished and that mm -hmm. child going back home does not solve the problem. Okay. The problem is you need to look at the family unit. Okay. Uh, you get the mother to come to the hospital, you assess what her level of education is. After doing that, what sort of support does she require? Does she require a community farming plan, you know, so she could 
uh, has tomato, she can trade in tomato for okra for somewhere else. So she sort of has a balanced diet. Is her husband a farmer? What sort of support does she does he require? Does he require some sort of emigric? There's something called emigric, which is mm -hmm. mobile agriculture, okay. which he can get messages on how to produce better crops on his phone. You know, what sort of support does the family require? So you don't treat the child, you need to treat the family. Okay. So yes, social, social status has a big impact in it. Okay, so you don't treat the child You alone. treat the family. You have to treat the family. The, you so treat the family. The family can positively help both the pregnant women and, and the, child. the child, yes. Okay. okay, so let's look at IDP camps now. We, oh. Obviously, we have um, we have pregnant we have pregnant women yes, there. We yes, have children. Yes, yes. So, how do you reach out to them? How do you educate them? Um, there is the the issues with the IDP camp. You know, the feedback. It's all in the news, and we all see okay. what is happening. Mm -hmm. yes. And women, are, they they have quite a bit of support. There's a World Health Organization yes. mm -hmm. that is supporting the camps. Uh, there are a few foundation um, NGOs that are also supporting the IDP camps. Um, but it is, is it enough? <laughs> is it enough? Um, with statistics and reports and feedback, we see that there's still a lot that needs to be, done. To be done. Yes. You know, we as Audrey Park, we will still keep doing our bit, mm -hmm. giving out the free packs okay. uh, to women that are pregnant. The, the, the packs that we give are three. So the woman gets the first one when she's pregnant, but you, you only get it in the hospital. Okay. So it encourages you to go to the hospital to hospital? register for ANC, okay. antenatal okay. care. Okay. And um, it contains products that you require whilst you're pregnant and some mm -hmm. introduced to product that your child would need. Okay. Then you get another one. Either you get it when your baby's born in the hospital okay. or at the completion of the immunization of the child. So you get the second one given to you. He also has products for the baby and for the mom. Um, then she has a t third one, which is a family pack. Once she's completed the whole, p everything that has to do with immunization. Uh, we have certain key points that we want to see. First, to ensure that the woman is registered for ANC. Two, to ensure that the baby is born in the hospital. Okay. Three, also to ensure that immunization is done and completed. Okay. And whatever checks that the hospital require from the mom, that is done as well. Okay. So we incentivize women to do those things. And we also use mobile technology okay. to, to support that as well. Okay, so mm -hmm. having talked about I, women in IDP camps, yes. now let's go to teenage mothers. Mothers yes. that are not well informed before yes. they got married and probably their parents do not want to have it or hear mm -hmm. that, you know, they got pregnant by yes. mistake. Yes. How do you help, you know, these, should I say, teenage, teenage mothers? mothers. Yes. Yes. Um, I've been dragged, dragged sort of into some complaints of young girls that got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them are out of rape and, you know, we don't always have to blame the girl. Mm -hmm. um, yes. The second circumstances that were beyond their control. Um, we've created a platform. There's a particular woman we met, you know, in the line of our work. Okay. And she has a baby that was so severely malnourished. And we decided that, you know what, we'll give her a tin of milk every two weeks for this okay. child. Okay. And six months down the line, the, the baby was already six months because we advocate for exclusive breastfeeding okay. until six months. And she brought this baby to her office. And the transformation of that child from when we first met mm -hmm. the child to when we met the child again, it was amazing. And she was a victim of circumstance. Okay. She has a baby. She's in one of the Lagos State shelter. Mm -hmm. And we decided as a company, you know, we'll support as many of them that we can't support mm -hmm. with milk, you know. So you can come to the office and grab a tin of milk okay. for your baby. And um, for now, that's as much support that we can give. Mm -hmm. But we're also giving them the parks as well and lectures. We do breastfeeding lectures. Okay. We do uh, labor and delivery. We have a few trainings that go on in our office. Mm -hmm. And we give okay. them the opportunity to enroll. We provide counseling for them. Uh, just to ensure that they don't feel like they're going on the journey alone. Okay. And we bring mothers together. We okay. have a, a, over a hundred WhatsApp group wow. where we support women uh, 24 hours a day. Okay, okay. Talking about you distributing product yeah. that could help and enhance the safety and health of the mother and the child. How okay. do you fund this product? How do you fund your programs yeah. and, you know, creating awareness? A lot of people ask us that because the numbers that we've done are uh, quite high. Okay. The Audrey Park has done over 4 million women and we're still uh, reaching out. Okay. Um, so we're not an NGO. First of all, the Audrey Park company is not an NGO. Okay. The Audrey Park company is a, a social enterprise. We okay. support businesses 
But we have a goal, which is the reduction of maternal and child mortality. Mm -hmm. okay. So we've created a marketing platform where brands can market their products directly to the mom, providing free samples. Okay. Uh, for the brand, you take the product directly to the mom. And for the mom, she gets the initial product for free and she's able to make a decision whether she wants to continue to purchase or not. Okay. But okay. it achieves our goal because she comes to the hospital to receive the pack. Okay. Yeah. You know, going through your profile, mm -hmm. you Thanks. mentioned the, your focus, which is to reduce Mortality. the high rate of mot uh, mortality. And so far, how have you been able to achieve that? Um, we've been able to get, we've had days where the immunization uh, attendance is taking up to 50% mm -hmm. because of the presence of the Audrey Pack. Mm -hmm. We've had women that were not planning on breastfeeding their children mm -hmm. at all. And the husband, mother and, you know, father and mother being present at one of our workshops and having a total change of mind. Okay. And uh, we are still running a lot of assessments. We don't, I can't tell you that we've contributed 30% to Nigeria reduction mm -hmm. okay. of maternal and child health. But we, as the Audrey Park Company, have contributed significantly okay. in the reduction of maternal and child mortality in Nigeria, mm -hmm. directly as an organization or one of the companies that we are implementing their uh, projects for. Okay. okay. I must say you have done your part, yes. you know, in trying to help reduce maternal and child mortality. Yes. So what do you think can be done in addition, you know, what do you think either the government or other people that are can interested, contribute. yes, mm -hmm. are interested in this, you know, in reducing maternal and child mortality, but do not know what to do, do not know how to go about it. Mm. What would you say can be done to help? I think everybody knows somebody that is pregnant. Mm -hmm. It's just we all adding our voice to say, um, have you registered at okay. the hospital? Okay. Or, you know, it could be your nanny, it could be your maid, it could be your driver's wife, it could be your boss's wife in the office, it could mm -hmm. be your colleague, it could be anybody that is pregnant. Just adding your voice to say, you know, are you okay? Have you registered for mm -hmm. ANC? Equipping yourself with information that you could share with sure. her and be able to prompt her to take the right step. Mm -hmm. Because as much as we've done 4 million women and counting, we still have not been able to reach every woman mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we employ every other person to be able to say, you know, why don't you go to the hospital? Because it's always better if you've got a professional to help take the right decision. Okay, okay. so you've touched Over individuals. Yeah. Individuals. Yes. Now, let's address, you know, government. How do you think they can come in to help? Because I know we have, you know, private, yes, um, we yes. have public uh, hospitals, hospitals, you know, yes. that provide these services for women. Yeah. How do you think they can do more the, to help? The government are doing amazing things already. Okay. Um, Lagos State government is doing a lot from the federal level. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Uh, the federal government has set up a Safe Motherhood uh, Tax Force Committee, which the Audrey Park is part of that committee. They are reached out, renovated a lot of, because when we create demand, the Audrey Park create, you know, create mothers, we get mothers to go to the hospital. Okay. But okay. we depend on the government to ensure that when they get to the hospital, there are people there, there yes. are doctors there, there are midwives mm -hmm. there, okay. they are, there's electricity, there are beds that this woman can deliver their baby. Because we can't yeah. tell everybody, mm -hmm. go to the hospital and they get there and it's like, there's nobody to attend nobody to, to us. Attend, yes. So we're also partnering with government and carrying government along in what we're doing mm -hmm. uh, to say we're creating all this demand, you know. And there are a lot of organizations that is renovating maternal wards. There, um, 24 hospitals were renovated by one of our partners and uh, fully renovated with electricity, solar power. And a lot of moms go there and they don't want to go back home because mm -hmm. there's no electricity mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. home. And when they are discharged after delivery, it's like, you know what, we'll just stay in the world. <laughs> and also, okay. we have those challenges, but it, okay. it's it's quite, I think, um, wonderful to to do what I do okay. and be able to see the impact, impact and the feedback from mothers, from emails to messages to phone calls, okay. and you know we've also created an app. The Audrey Park Company, we've created an app because okay. the numbers are getting too alarming, alarming, and we can't manage them on WhatsApp group. The groups are just too much. Okay. So we're getting moms to join and, and also benefit more From, information. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Yes. So okay, much. so we have been talking to Lilian Odim, uh, the CEO of the Audrey Pack Company. We will be going on a short break. Please be sure to stay glued because the conversation continues immediately after the break.
a safe environment is every family's dream. At High Impact Planet Resort, our fully furnished service apartment is a home away from home. Amazing views right in your luxurious world. Work out to keep fit for an amazing buddy at the gym. Get affordable groceries and personal care items at the supermarket. Feel relaxed and beautify yourself at the fully equipped spa. High Impact Planet. Fun just got real. Okay, welcome back. It's still tea or coffee on High Impact Television. You know, before we went on break, we're talking with Lillian Odim, CEO of the Audrey Pack, and she was explaining, you know, the contribution of the government towards maternal and child care. And she, as an individual, has also, you know, contributed in her own way. So now, let's look at the government has done their part by, you know, putting up facilities that could help and enhance the safety and health of pregnant women and their children. You have also done one or two things. So what are, you know, we need the pregnant women themselves to actually do things right. So what are the things that they do generally that is wrong during pregnancy? Oh, there's a lot of them. Okay. First of all, not going to antenatal classes. Okay. Uh, a first-time mom needs as much information as possible. Okay. There are little things that could happen that you could undermine and uh, think that it is nothing, but it is something very important, important. from spotting whilst pregnant to severe cramp and, and things like that. And uh, a pregnant woman that attends antenatal classes would have been aware of what to do and what is alarming and what is not alarming. Okay. Some pregnant women don't bother. They don't go to ANC. Um, they tell you, no, I'll just register when I'm seven months pregnant. When I have three more months to go, then I'll mm -hmm. go and deliver my baby in the hospital. After all, what, the, what they want me to do is to ensure I deliver the baby okay. in the hospital. But there's also the safety of the pregnancy itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there are complications that could have been dealt with earlier in the pregnancy. Okay. And um, some children are born prematurely. So if you don't attend antenatal at all, how do you get all this information to be mm -hmm. able to look after yourself and okay. prepare for the new birth? Mm -hmm. Some women don't take their uh, pregnancy vitamins. Uh, they, don't take their, they don't bother with folic acid. They don't mm -hmm. take ferron. They don't take anything. They just tell you, my religion says I can't take anything. Mm -hmm. I should go and once I drink this anointing oil, the baby will come out and, and stuff. Of course, we are all religious. Either you're a Christian or you're a Muslim. But when it comes to health, I think... It's important to, you know, do what the doctor says and, right. and, and do the right thing. So okay. women also don't take their prenatal vitamins. So okay. Okay. those are two things I've mentioned that they should do differently. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know, the only time we're talking about social status, you yes. know, having an influence on maternal health. Yeah. Now, will you say that, you know, it's maybe the price of having to go to a proper a hospital, hospital. Mm. that make them actually try this traditional method, <clears throat> excuse me, and make them try this, you know, traditional method, you know, of child childbirth, mm. or how would you put it? Um, I don't agree totally, because okay. the traditional method is not free. The TBA okay. also gets paid. Mm -hmm. um, the government hospitals are free. Okay. But they give you a list of things to buy. To buy. You know, right. Those okay. are things you would buy anyway. Mm -hmm. You have nine months to be ready. So if yourself and your partner or, you know, you just decide, um, I've got nine months. For every month, I'll buy a baby grow. I would get, you know, um, baby uh, shoes. You know, you take your time and you put things together. You may not have everything, mm -hmm. but at least you have some things to prepare for the birth of the child. Okay. Um, so that, that's all that the government hospital require. You mm -hmm. go in. Uh, well, of course, there could be cases of emergency mm -hmm. where okay. you need to buy drugs, drugs and you need to pay for certain injections and stuff. But ultimately, the government hospital is free. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So you have talked about things that they are doing wrong. Yes. Now let's talk about things that they should do. You know, 
aside going for prenatal classes, mm -hmm. you know, being educated on what to do. Mm -hmm. What else? Especially, especially on the kind of food. Food, exactly. Because you mentioned nutrition. malnutrition. Yeah. nutrition, there's, there's a lot. You know, you need iron. When I was pregnant, I was anemic. Okay. And um, it was important for me to eat foods that are high in iron. Okay. So I started looking out for things like that. I had a lot of fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. I had meat and, you know, I had a lot of, I had a bad issue with calcium, my tooth, okay, where okay. I had issues with them. And when you're pregnant, it's one of the things. Okay. You need to take better care of your, your, your gum mm -hmm. and, and all of that because it could become, uh, give you a lot of issues in, okay. in pregnancy. So I started eating right. I had fish. I would, you know, and um, it wasn't, the focus wasn't really me because I really don't like fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. But the focus wasn't me anymore. It was about my child. So I started eating those things and ensuring that I was incorporating that in my diet every day. Okay. And fruits and vegetables could be expensive, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of alternatives, okay. you know. You could have okra, mm -hmm. tuo, okay. there are things that like contains for women in the north. Mm -hmm. There is ugu. There are a lot of ways you can make iron, your ugu with yes. crayfish. Yes. And, you know, it will give you iron and, and things like that. So women should try. And when you're pregnant, you don't, you're not just eating to be full. Mm -hmm. But you're eating because yourself and your child require mm -hmm. uh, the nutrients to be able to grow properly and be able to have blood, you know, to, to be able to pass on to the child the right amount of all that they require to grow. So... Eating right, nutrition is very, very important in pregnancy. Okay. So pregnant women should be cautious of what they eat whilst they're pregnant. Okay. okay. So aside, you know, eating and food. Exercise. Okay. Exercise. Earlier in my pregnancy, I was all over the place. Okay. I could work, I could go to the office, I could do things. But later on, I had, you know, some complications. Okay. And I couldn't walk as much. I had swollen foot mm -hmm. and all that. And I decided I was going to do yoga. Okay. You know, that's not easily found everywhere in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but I, I, I thought that was what I could manage. So I would go and fall asleep through the class anyway, but at least I would try a little bit. And just taking a walk sometimes in the evening would help to just keep the baby moving. And um, there's, there's, there's so little or so much a pregnant woman can do. Can do. But your body will tell you what you can accommodate. Okay. So once you're going beyond what your body can, you stop, but just keep pushing. The things that you're not accustomed to before you got pregnant, it may be difficult for you to take them on while she's pregnant, you know, for a woman that doesn't work mm -hmm. out at all. Then she's pregnant, she gets on the treadmill, you know, so you need to gradually do those things. Mm -hmm. And also you need to start only when your doctor says it's okay. You know, you don't just decide that everybody that is pregnant these days is doing some video, dance video, I'm going to go and mm -hmm. do mine. Is it okay? You have a, a high risk pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Is your maybe the cervix is not closed mm -hmm. and you know everybody's telling you to go on bed rest, or maybe you're pregnant with multiple and the doctor is concerned about you just laying down to okay. ensure that the baby's fine. So fine. whatever the steps you need to take with regards to okay. so exercise has to be something that your doctor has advised. Advised. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, how would you, uh, you know, a career woman who is finding it hard to actually balance, you know? paying attention, going for antenatal care and work, how would you advise such person to be able to balance such that she is fine, she's doing well at her workplace, her baby is doing fine and she's also doing fine? I think, um, well, when I was pregnant, I was at that time starting my company. Okay. So it was quite demanding. Okay. And um, in working in what I do, I've met a lot of women with this same question okay. and, and all. But... Um, First of all, you as a mom, you need to think of what is important to you. Okay. Um, my primary focus at the time is the safety of my child. Okay. So everything else was secondary. So as soon as I got that with my mind right, I knew what, you know, you need to know when it is right to let your employer know that you're mm -hmm. pregnant. Because as soon as you let them know that you're pregnant, you could get a bit of, you know, I have antenatal this morning, mm -hmm. I have to be in late, I have to... You would, you know, a lot of organizations will give you those slacks. But some women may not want to say they are pregnant until they are five months pregnant to be sure that everything is good with the pregnancy. Yeah, okay. But you just need to decide at what point do you tell your employer you're pregnant. So okay. once you do that, then you're able to share your antenatal schedule with them. I'm sure there's nobody that will say, don't go, mm -hmm. stay in the office. I don't think there's any employer like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Going through your social media platforms and looking at your social media platforms, 
we realized that yes. you have been doing um, this awareness about breast breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Yes. And there's no way we would talk about maternal and child care mm -hmm. and we would not talk about breastfeeding because yes. obviously breastfeeding yes. helps for the Re safety reduction of, yeah. of the child, child and mortality, the health of the child. Yeah. So tell us what, what is, um, you know, how important breastfeeding basically like the knowledge of, you know, having to breastfeed your child daily because you yeah. find some women mm -hmm. actually, some women. they try out, you know, cereals and on their babies. Why? Because probably time, like I said, for yeah. a career woman mm -hmm. for time, yeah. and they leave out their babies, you know, yeah. with someone to care for yes. and then they drop cereals. So, like, we need to inform how important, you know, breastfeeding is. 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 Um, for, I, I always try to use myself as, as, as an example okay. because... Okay. To me, it's real to draw from something that you've lived yourself mm -hmm, rather than to come with a textbook. Mm -hmm. You know, when I had my daughter, my milk didn't come. I was a first time mom. I was abroad. I didn't have my mom or family and all that. And we were struggling a lot with when is this milk going to come? You know, I want, I've, I've read so much about breastfeeding okay. before my daughter was born and I was ready. I attended breastfeeding class and I was mm -hmm. ready. Um, but the milk didn't show up. So I felt sad because I felt like I'm, I'm not a good mom. I'm not able to produce what my yes. child is going mm -hmm. to eat. There's something wrong with me. You know, but there's actually nothing wrong with you because now I'm able to teach other moms mm -hmm. and tell them there's, there's nothing wrong with you. It does take some time, some stimulation. Always put the child to the milk. There's nothing wrong. Once your breast is not, milk is not coming on, okay, start the baby on the formula. You know, okay. as time goes on, as the milk starts to come in, you take the baby off and you focus uh, solely on breastfeeding. Okay. But I think it's important for the baby always to be put to the breast okay. so that it tells your brain that you okay. need to produce um, mm -hmm. milk for the baby. I was insisted on getting a pump because I felt like, okay, maybe my daughter wasn't sucking hard enough. And I was stopped at that point and told that, you know what, don't get a pump, you know, just keep putting your child to the breast. And okay. at some point, it was, you know, we, we were good. And I could breastfeed as much as I wanted, and my daughter was fine. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about awareness now. Yeah. How do you create awareness, you know, against to reduce my mortality, mater, maternal and, and child, child yeah. mortality? Um, we have... The Audrey Park, we partner with a lot of people, as I said. Okay. And we have workshops that we run in the hospital. Okay. Uh, we've broken down the courses of maternal and child mortality into mm -hmm. different sections. And we teach those in the hospital. So we deal with issues with malnutrition. We deal with, you know, what to expect during labor, how to prepare yourself. Uh, we deal with prevention of, you know, malaria. So these are classes that we have within the hospital. Okay. But a mom needs to be in the hospital to, to attend the classes. The classes are free. The parks are given free. So we sort of use the, the community, let the community know that, oh, Audrey Park, we're working in your states for X amount of time. And please tell the moms to come to the hospital. And we have usually... In an internet class, we've had situations where we've had 500 pregnant women wow. in one class mm -hmm. um, in a particular hospital. The hospital has told her that they've never had that kind of turnout mm -hmm. before. You know, we've had immunization where children are being brought for the first time to be immunized because their mother was getting a free pack from the Audrey Park company. Mm -hmm. And they've never had those kind of numbers before. So mm -hmm. we're, we're quite excited and we're happy about what we do. Okay. Okay. You know, you have been in touch with over four million. Yes, we are. Women, and pregnant women. Yes. And obviously, you would, you know, interact with pregnant women every day. So, what, <laughs> what are the major challenges that you know they come to you that they are faced with, and how can these challenges be solved? Um. I've had all kinds of challenge to, I can't sleep at night. I want a pregnancy pillow. Okay. You know, we partner with some organization also to design our own pregnancy pillow. Okay. Okay. So we've had issues with, um, my husband is not helpful. So there's more, not medical. The, the support mm -hmm. that we give is not only medical. medical. We, we also sort of help with emotional support mm -hmm. and help the woman to balance her emotions while she's pregnant, because it's, it's, it's very important yeah. to be able to do so. We've had um, issues with money, you know, financial mm -hmm. issues. We've had all kinds of issues, all kinds of issues. 
and um, my child, should I circumcise? Should I not circumcise? Mm -hmm. Of course, we know what's right, so we advise them accordingly. Mm -hmm. We've had, I'm trying to wean my baby. What kind of meals do I start with? Mm -hmm. How do I move from breast milk into formula? How do I, what kind of meals do I prepare? So we have a lot of um, meals that we've designed for children from six months. And we also share this with mother. It's, of course, endorsed uh, by nutritionists. It's prepared by nutritionists. And it's gone through all the required um, approval. So we share that with the mothers. And they, they, they call for help 24 hours of mm -hmm. the day. Damn. In the middle of the night, you see a mom goes, I can't sleep. Is there any other mom that is not sleeping as well? And they sort of connect. We just bring, aside from having the professionals there to advise the women, mm -hmm. we bring mothers to talk to moms. Okay. Because really, as much as your doctor would give you advice, there's nobody that understands what you're going through unless they're going through they're it going themselves. Through it. Okay. 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 So this question is coming from a place of curiosity. I should okay. have asked it, you know, <laughs> probably from the beginning of this interview. Okay. You know, but what made you start the Audrey Pack company? Was it from a personal experience? experience like you or said you just that, saw yeah. something that triggered, mm -hmm. you know, the need to, you know, um, have this company? Um, <laughs> pregnancy wasn't such a pleasant experience for me. Um, okay. When I was three months pregnant, I started bleeding, you know, um, and my hospital was quite a distance from where I lived. Okay. And it was 3 a.m., so we went to the hospital and the doctor was like, you know, if the baby will stay, the baby will stay, if the baby won't stay, you know, and I just felt so disappointed that... With what I'm going through, does he not understand that I need support? Does he mm -hmm. not understand that I'm distressed and, and everything? And um, I just knew that I, you know, I needed to do things differently. Mm -hmm. Then I went abroad um, at a point where I was five months pregnant. I, I had everything you could possibly have when you were pregnant. Mm -hmm. I had PGD. My ligaments were loose, so I couldn't walk properly at the okay. final stages of my pregnancy. And my daughter was born prematurely. Mm -hmm. She was in the incubator for a while. She was, had all kinds of tubes going through her nose, her mouth, and it was scary for me, still is till this day. And um, I love her to the moon and back. But it was, it was a very difficult time. But it was a time that I started thinking, like, who is supporting me? Mm -hmm. In the UK, I had Bliss. There's an organization called Bliss. They support women that are, have premature babies. So I could talk to other moms that were dealing with what I was like, oh, that happened to me as well. And it was, it was more comforting for me talking to those moms and mm. hearing what the doctor was saying because the doctor was going to treat. But this mom had gone through exactly what I had done. And, and, and I said, you know what, I was going to do things differently. Yeah. So I came back to Nigeria. My daughter was three months old when the other park started. Mm -hmm. I met some people that partnered with, our, with us. And... Um, it wasn't supposed to be a big thing. It was supposed to be something little. And now it's, it's grown beyond me and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And we have an amazing people uh, uh, that are, are the Audrey Park Warriors. They, they just believe in, in the Audrey Park vision and go out of their way every day to ensure that more women are reached, more women are informed, more women are doing things differently. Okay. And um, we all are just sort of pushing towards that direction. And I see the change and the impact that my own personal experience uh, had brought to uh, maternal and child health in Nigeria is, is, is quite amazing. Okay, mm -hmm. we need to round up soon, but Thank before you. then, what has been the, you know, the feedback and responses you've gotten from women? How have they been able to adopt to the initiative? Um, the feedback is quite overwhelming. Uh, okay. You know, I, I was trying to draw from my earlier question. Has been overwhelming. Um, women begging to be part of the group and like, oh, my sister is on. Please, can you add my sister to the group? She's a new mom. And um, hospitals are having on their signs, you know, you can receive your Audrey Pack here without us even requesting. Mm -hmm. You know, we walk into a hospital and people are like, oh, Audrey Pack. I, I think people refer to me as Audrey Pack. I was like, no, that's where I work. My name is Lillian. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and, and things like that. And I think every member of staff is also called Audrey Pack. And it, it's quite, we've had letter of recommendation from the government applauding us for what we're doing. We've had okay. that from the Commissioner for Health. Uh, we've had all sorts of endorsements and okay. encouragements from everybody. All right. So, so what would you 
you know, words of inspiration to pregnant women or mm -hmm. teenage mothers out there? Um, pregnancy, first of all, is not a bad thing. So okay. anybody that tells you different, like it's not a disease, it's, it's not anything bad. Okay. If it's not something that you've planned and it happens, it's just trying to get the right help and, and be able to ensure that you and your baby are safe. Okay. Speak to the right person and try to get help to ensure you're all safe. Right. Thank you okay. very Thank much, you. Lillian and Odim. Mm -hmm. It's Thank amazing you. having you here. I've learned so a nice lot, I must say. And, you know, <laughs> when that time comes, I know better. <laughs> I know <Please>. better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All so, right. maternal, um, we've been talking about maternal and child care. Thank yes. you, Lillian, Thank for you. Giving points mm -hmm. that are actually necessary and valid for yes, valid for all pregnant women yes. out there to know. You know, maternal death rates can actually reduce drastically if we, you know, keep on informing and mm -hmm. people having knowledge about this. So pregnant women out there try and be informed, try and go for antenatal care because there's nothing more important than your safety and that of the baby yes. and of course without the mothers you know we wouldn't be here yeah, and of course. you know our, your safety is very important to thumbs us. up to all mothers yes 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 <laughs> and you yes oh. as a mother also <laughs> <laughs> all right to so still tea or coffee on high impact television you know we have to go we have to round up now but we will meet again same time same station bringing you another educating episode of tea or coffee i remain Wurao Popola. And I remain Modupe Jacobs. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.